What's up everybody? It's Boy Meme here for breakfast. Is there a delay? I mm. Okay, I think I think there's a little bit of a delay. That's fine. For breakfast I didn't have anything. For brunch, I had craft macaroni and cheese. I've been craving it the past few days and I had it today and it was it was fine. It was craft mac and cheese. But you know, um, you know, sometimes you just you just want some craft. And uh, I had some craft and that was that was pretty tasty. Um I'm waiting on that jacket I bought yesterday. I'm just doing my thing. Um, uh, he said it would take one to two business days. Uh, I think that means maybe two business days uh, for it to arrive. But also, I think it's a night in Europe right now, so I don't know how that'll turn out. My only hope is that it's shipped by boat. Is that it's shipped by plane, which is like 12 days, not by boat, which is like a month. Um, but I can't really remember the last time I ordered something and it took 30 days to arrive. And I'm sure, you know, like, shipping is like a sort of a logistical miracle. Like, I feel like all shipping could, should take like six months, you know, but um, somehow I've never had anything ship in under 30 days. So, um, yeah, hopefully it takes about 12 days at a ship by plane, um, which honestly with economies of scale might be cheaper than shipping it by boat, but who knows? Um, maybe bigger things it's shipped by boat and that's, that's cheaper, but I don't know. Um, you know, I'm just hanging out. Um, I just scratched my hands. That's okay. Um, uh, the market's up today, so how do you about that? I love how the market's closed on weekends, because sometimes I'm just laying in bed and I'm trying to be comfy, you know? And then the market's closed, and it's just great. It's And I don't have to, I don't even have to worry about my portfolio. Um, and it's not as if my portfolio is large enough for me to really worry about anything. But it is spooky to have a really bad market day and see my Roth IRA go down by like $30, you know? It's weird. Um, but I know, time in the market beats timing the market. So by the time I'm 65, that $2,000 I have in my Roth will be like $150,000, you know? And that's crazy. Um, and, you know, if I invest $100 every month, I'm good. That, you know, I'll, I'll be good to retire. So that, that's the plan and I'll probably invest more into my retirement, um, you know, as I get older, and, you know? Things will be good. Um, last night I worked on some homework. I worked on this assignment talking about the intercultural classroom for my business class. It was really interesting. It was sort of a, it looked like a, either a really early DVD or an, yeah, either a really early DVD or a um, really new VHS tape. Um, and it was showing like, it was a class with like three American students and then the rest of the students were like international students who came from other countries. And it showed how, um, you know, like, there was this, I don't want to get it wrong. It, it was like oh, some South American country. It was like El, Salva El Salvador or something. I, I don't, I don't want to be confirmed because it totally might be wrong. Um, but there was another guy from like an African country. There was a girl from Japan and a guy from China. And um, it was really interesting because, you know, um, there are, you know, w when you're, when you're raised, you have so many like cultural things, just like, you know, me being raised in America is very similar to everyone else being raised in America because we're all part of American culture. But if somebody's raised in like Japan, uh, something else really interesting is that, um, you know, uh, in an American classroom, you're sort of graded on your, um, willingness to discuss with the teacher and other people in the class about, like, the subject. Um, and for my, and to me, that seems, like, sort of inherent. Like, of course, like, of course you would, you would talk to the teacher and the students. And, uh, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm more, I'm a quieter in that regard. Uh, I, I have a weird, I have weird brain worms around the teacher. I feel like, you know, the teacher wouldn't be teaching a class if they were basically an, es an expert in that subject. So I don't, I try not to voice my own opinion too much, which is actually, I think, I think is kind of bad for me um, uh, in, a, in a classroom. But anyway, um, in Japan, you sort of don't talk at all, right? And you just listen to the teacher because, um, you know, the teacher is like teaching the class and they're the ultimate authority on the subject. And you should sort of just keep your mouth shut. And as opposed to being graded in America by like participation and like speaking, uh, you're graded in Japan on how like respectful you are toward the teacher, and uh, you know that's just really that's just really interesting to me. Um, and it's not as if in America we're disrespectful to teachers, right? I mean, <laughs> God, some high schools you are, but like in in college, like of course you're respectful to the teacher. Um, 
but you know you still discuss with them and you can argue with them and you know it's all in like good faith but you know relative to someone who grew up in Japan and went through all their like equivalent K through 12 schooling in Japan um, going to America and having people argue with the teacher all the time just seems something so it just seems would seem, seem like something so alien you know strange um, and there were just some other examples like the guy from the South American country um, and the African country um, they were talking about the, the whole subject of the um, video was the teacher was talking about like land rights in Antarctica and I'm pretty sure we figured that out but um, I guess at the time it was being recorded, they were still sort of figuring that out and they were figuring out the treaties and stuff. And uh, they were talking about like how, you know, maybe the UN should step in and allow to like, allow to living countries to like have some stake in the land in Antarctica, which I think is the case now. I think you can get a, I think you can get a sponsor from a first world country so then you can dr like drill or do whatever there as well as other people and like do research. I'm not entirely sure how it works. But the guy from the South American country and the guy from the African country, um, they went to like um, these like stories about how like you know um, he wouldn't like current like the South American guy was talking about how his country is in war and he wouldn't want um, you know decisions made by people in America to cause war in developing countries and something like what some of the American students were suggesting like would have led to that, um, assumedly you know thinking about just like the past. And uh, there's also a Russian student that I forgot to mention, and she was talking about like very specific things, and just a Russian accent seems kind of angry. Um, and so people perceived her as being mean when that's just how Russian people talk, even in a Russian accent. Um, and you know, the guy from Africa also went into a story talking about how you know uh, some engineers came to his village and uh, said that they knew the best place for this bridge to be built. You know. And they were insisting that they it would help the people in the village, but the people in the village knew like information about the land, you know, and yet like you couldn't you couldn't build a bridge here and it would mess up a whole bunch of things. Not only would it mess up the ecosystem, but it would also mess up um, you know, like current routes between different villages and it would just it would just mess things up. And these engineers were very insistent on this plan because from their outside perspective in like America or Europe or whatever they were, um, they knew that this was the best place for this bridge in Africa, you know. And um he was talking about how generally, um, you know, it should be made by people who are there, the, the decisions, right? And in that case, people who are in Antarctica doing research should probably make the decision. Probably people want to, probably people in Antarctica who aren't necessarily part of a super powerful first world nation, because of course you're a little, if you're part of a first world nation, you just kind of grow up with brain worms. Um, and I, you know, that's fair for me. I'm sure that's fair for a lot of people watching this video. Um, who are probably in a first world country, it's just like, you can't, like, you are, you, you are, you are indebted with a certain perspective that, like, you cannot really remove. And it's like, you, you can't, like, I, like, I don't know what it's like to grow up in, like, I don't know, like, like, Libya or something. Like, that, like, like, I don't, I can't even begin to imagine what that would be like, because I live in America, where it's the richest country in the world, and people at McDonald's make way more per hour than people in Libya do per year, you know? And it's weird. Like, it's not even a... It's like, it's a perspective shift that I can even imagine. Anyway. Um, so, from the American student's perspective in this classroom, the guy from South America and the guy from Africa's stories um, were seemed a little long-winded to them um, because they give sort of contextless sort of opinions uh, based on, it, and it's sort of assumed that it's based on your personal experience of like the things you've learned and the things you know. Um, but from their cultures, it's like you talk about like, you talk about your experiences and then what led you to your opinions and like what your opinions are. So um, from someone's perspective who didn't grow up on that culture, it can seem like someone's just being very long-winded and taking a long time to talk about their question when everybody else is like very short in their question, talk about their answer when everybody else is short like sort of shorten their answer um when really that's just how that's just how people talk you know um and like what like are you like if, if someone grew up talking their whole way one way like are you gonna make them accommodate you you know um and you know it was really enlightening because you know in high school i had um there are some exchange students that you know <laughs> in the in the video the american students were like very rude and, and strange and, uh, you know, maybe this is when international students weren't as prevalent, um, but now they're in, like, my high school, you know, and I, I don't know if that was the case then, but it's certainly the case now, and um, at least for me, like, of course I wasn't as rude as these students in the video, but it, 
I, I, you know, sometimes I was a little confused or unsure about, you know, what these people's perspective could be, right? Um, because sometimes, you know, the international student would be called on and they would just, they would talk about things in a certain way where, it, you know, it wouldn't make sense to me personally, um, or they wouldn't have anything to say, right? And I would just think, you know, from my perspective, like, oh, maybe that person wasn't listening or like maybe, um, maybe, uh, that person just, maybe that person is just wrong and they haven't had my enlightened experience, right? Um, and of course I don't literally think that, it's just sort of subconscious, but I feel like I felt that and it's weird because, um, you know, growing up in America, you sort of assume that everyone you interact with is gonna have the exact same life experiences as you, um, being an American, but you know, when somebody isn't doing that, um, you just gotta, you just gotta account for that in your brain and I haven't in the past. And I just think that's interesting. Um, so yeah, uh, and then the thing I finished up this morning, I wrote all my, I wrote all my answers last night, but this morning I got all the objects together. Basically you get all the objects together that, and there's like metaphors about like what your culture growing up is. So I got like a $2 bill talking about my, um, focus on personal finance and how my parents used to be in a lot of debt. And so that made me, um, you know, really care about personal finance. And, um, like I also got a clock, uh, for my, uh, you know, punctuality, um, because, you know, my parents always talk about the importance of being on time and I'm never late for things. Um, I also got a, uh, it was gonna be my Apple Watch, but I already had a $2 bill there and my wallet. It felt a little ostentatious and stupid, um, but I got my wallet um, and it was meant to like, there was a, there was an interesting dichotomy in the assignment between um, sort of um, an egalitarian view of leadership and a sort of, um, hierarchical view of leadership, you know, in a family context. And, uh, you know, when me and my dad are speaking, we speak sort of as equals. And of course my dad has wisdom to speak down onto me, right? Um, and that was actually, uh, there are two old coins that were on my dad's keychain that was meant to be a metaphor for the sort of formal uh, perspective of wisdom that I have of my dad. Um, because he has these two old coins that my grandfather had on his keychain and then he gave them to my dad. My dad has them on his keychain. When my dad gets tired of having the coins on his keychain or when he dies, you know, I'm gonna have those coins on my keychain, right? And that sort of is a metaphor for the formality of the wisdom that he's passing down onto me, like how he's passing down these old coins, right? Um, but going back to the egalitarian thing, uh, when I'm talking to my dad about like the news or, um, you know, finances, I feel like it's, rather egalitarian, it's sort of a flat perspective and we're sort of speaking to each other as equals. And of course he's my dad and that whole wisdom thing I talked about before, but it's still like, we're like equals. And uh, a perspective of that is how he gave me, uh, is how he gave me this wallet. This is, this is my wallet. Um, can I open this up and show it? No, no I can't. Um, but. Uh, yeah, this is my wallet and you open it up and it accordions out, you know, I really want to get a thinner one But my dad gave this to me as a gift and he's always backing these Kickstarter projects and every year I get a new wallet from a Kickstarter project he backed like seven years ago, but um, You know, this is a pretty good one. It's it's nice um, And I use this wallet as sort of a representation of like um, the egalitarian mindset because he gives me gifts and I try to give him Try to give him gifts of course I have less money than my dad, so it's a little um, less common to give my dad gifts, but I still try to do it, right? And that was sort of meant to represent the egalitarian relationship. And um, also my laptop, because I'm very immersed in sort of the Linux and the ThinkPad subculture. Um, you know, less so now because I'm sort of doing my own things when it comes to computers, uh, but especially when I was starting with Linux, you know, sort of the only thing you could do was uh, go into these subcultures and these and these subreddits and these boards, right? Um, where people would talk, on um, these Discord servers where people would talk about, um, you know, things we were interested in, like Linux and ThinkPads. And, you know, I feel like I've sort of graduated from that sort of stuff. Um, I know a lot of stuff now and a lot of the stuff discussed on those boards and forums and, uh, and Discord servers is like rather elementary and stuff I already know about. Um, a lot of it um, was really useful for me when I was starting out. And I think it's like, I'm speaking about it as if I'm some sort of computer master. I started using Linux four years ago. It's just that like a lot of people on the online are like started using Linux like one or two years ago, you know? And so it's just a little, there's like a little bit of gap in knowledge, you know, that's a little um, 
less intriguing, right? Um, but, you know, when you're, um, it was a subculture I certainly immersed myself in, and I feel like it's given me, like, it's, it's imprinted my brain, the, these, this sort of subculture, uh, in a way to where I really care about, like, software freedom and, um, just, like, uh, like, I don't really believe in, like, subscriptions for things you also pay for. Like, that eat sleep thing is crazy, how they charge you so much money and then you pay a subscription on top of that. I mean, I've heard it's very good for your sleep, but also I'm not sure if it's worth the, uh, sort of ideological sacrifice of, um, paying for something upfront and then also doing a subscription. And if eight sleep stops existing, like, that's gonna stop working. So, it's, it's just crazy to me. Um, but yeah, I feel like that subculture has had a really big perspective shift on my life, and so I put my ThinkPad back there. You can barely see it. You can see how there's a little rectangular color difference back there. Um, but, um, yeah, and that was, it. that was all the objects. Um, and I just think that those two assignments really were really interesting, and they were kind of enlightening when I came to, um, <laughs> God, I, I set it up for my skin not to be, like, bright 6F hex code white, um, but now that the sun is out, it's, like, it's that again. But, yeah, the, the two assignments were just really enlightening, and, uh, were really interesting, and I turned them in, and they weren't late, like my other business homework that I forgot about, and, uh, yeah, things are good. Um, I also had a can of coffee, so that's why I've been talking for almost 17 minutes. Um, I'm probably gonna walk on the treadmill now, and, um, oh, my Bitcoin's up. I have $23 in Bitcoin. I put, tw I put, tw I got a Coinbase account because I turned 18, and that's what all those crypto links in the description are. They're all Coinbase wallet links. I know I should probably have my own wallets. It's just, I, I don't want to deal with that. I don't care enough about cryptocurrency to like do that. Um, and I don't think I'm going to do anything weird enough from Coinbase's perspective for them to like disable my wallets and just seize the money. Um, but you know, I got a Coinbase account just recently because I turned 18 and um, you know, uh, I put $20 in crypto and then for signing up, they gave me $3 in Bitcoin. Sorry, not crypto, Bitcoin. I put $20 in Bitcoin and uh, because I signed up, they put $3 in Bitcoin, and now it's 23 it was down for a little bit, it went down to like $19, uh, but now you have $23.47 in Bitcoin, so that's pretty cool. Um, I'm not sure if Bitcoin's an investment that would necessarily make me rich, especially with only $20, but earnestly, I'm not putting my money into Shiba Inu or something. Um, you know, even though I have that link in the description, if you want to send me Shiba Inu, you know, I'm not, I'm not complaining, right? But, it's it's stupid. It's a stupid purchase. Um, but, yeah. Alright, see you, dude. I think that's it. Uh, yeah. Alright, see you, dude. Is that it? Yeah. Took a shower. Yeah, okay. Alright, see you, dude.